When I got injured, everyone was like, I should make a vlog or do this or do that. But I thought to myself, I'm not the only person that suffered from a long-term injury. Although my experiences can relate to some people, others' experience is just as important as mine. It's in unity that our greatest strength lies. The more individuals that rally your cause, the better. And that's why Injury Chronicles was birthed. So we have come together to share our experiences through a series of personal interviews. Everyone has their own story. Do not fear being the one true maverick you were born to be. Create your narrative and inspire. My name is Abera Ezra, and in 2021, I ruptured my Achilles. This is my road to recovery. Yeah, so I started, started at Bruin. Uh, this is a Sunday league team. Um, was there for maybe half a year before getting scouted by a few teams um, like Arsenal, Chelsea, more London, London-based teams. Um, decided to go to Arsenal. Was there for maybe five years. <clears throat> um, played there, then got released. Went to Fulham for two and a half years or so. Uh, got released from there. Went to Reading for half a year, got released from there. Um, then went to Millwall for my scholar. So I was there for two years, then got released from there. Went on trial to a few teams afterwards, went to Sunderland, went to Bristol City. <coughs> uh, got released from there. Well, not released, but didn't get in. Um, and then thankfully to God, got signed by QPR. They gave me a year contract. Um, worked for maybe three or four months, got offered a new contract and from there started to grow, started to get better, improve, play first in football and from there got a move to, to Palace and that's where I am now. So that day, I remember it was Roy Hodgson like, telling everyone that he's leaving and stuff like that. So it was a bit of a an emotional day on that side for the whole club. And... Um, yeah, we've had like a little meeting in the office, <clears throat> then gone out onto the pitch to train, doing whatever, warm up fine, chilling, laughing, joking, um, doing boxes, then we've gone into games and I just remember someone passing me the ball, taking a touch with my left foot and gone to like push off with my right and I just felt like a felt like someone kicked me, but not with like studs or anything like that. It just felt like someone kicked me and it was a loud, <clears throat> a loud bang. So I've looked around like, to see who was near me and no one was there. So I, immediately I started to panic a bit. Um, and from there I sort of knew that whatever it was, it was serious. So I just remember crying. They're taking me into the office. I'm in tears in the office. Everyone's trying to sort of just support you but there's nothing anyone can say in that moment um and yeah it was just a sad day i remember getting my phone seeing that you're in the sort of they send like a message before they select anyone or if you're in this preliminary squad or whatever and i remember getting a message for uh england first team and ugh, i just put my phone, just put my phone down like in shock like i can't to see that happen on this day is just a madness so yeah it was just a sad day shock telling my parents telling my family everyone's just so sad and you feel helpless to be honest but yeah that was a, a sad day for sure before getting injured I was I was in one of those those phases where you're feeling yourself you're just feeling good you're you're positive you're confident whenever you touch the ball you feel like you can do whatever you want and um that's where I was at. Um, any game I went into, I was positive that I was going to score or assist or have a good game. Didn't think about um, 
I wasn't worried, I wasn't anxious, wasn't nervous, none of this. It was just me enjoying my football. <clears throat> Which is why the moment that it happened, not that it is a good time to get injured, but for it to happen then, it felt like such a such a blow because I was feeling myself climb and establish myself as a player and becoming the type of player I want to be. And yeah, it just it just felt like a, a tough time to get to get hit like that. It's peak because the only thing you're thinking about, well, me personally, was am I going to get back to what I was doing? Because I was seeing, watch videos of myself, I know what I can do, I know what I'm capable of, and I could see where, I could see my trajectory. Um, and this is just my eyes, what I'm thinking. But your doubt is, am I going to reach that? Because at the moment, I can't even use this foot. And I can see my calf is getting smaller and smaller every day to the point where it's like I've almost, this leg is, it's not even my leg. And thinking about, am I going to reach that? Am I going to get to a position where I'm performing every single week consistently and I'm confident in myself and fully believing that when I, when I go on a pitch, I can do what I want to do, which is how I felt before. And... That self-doubt, that sort of fear, um, for me, was only neutralised because of my faith in God. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that, I don't think I'm, I'm anywhere near where I am now. I don't think I'm being talked about in the same way. I don't think I'm as confident as I am. I don't think I'm performing as well as I am, if it isn't for that faith in God. That faith in God is what grounded me, what um, was a foundation for me. And it was something for me to work on, work off of, sorry. Because from there, you don't have anything. You're just sort of on your own in the wilderness. Like you don't, you have no idea what's going to happen, where you're going to go. And for me, that anchor was my faith in God. I think Having a, f a family that I've got, who are so tight and connected, I, I don't take it for granted because I understand I know a lot of people who don't have such a support network around them. So to have my family who are so tight and so um, loving, caring and there for me, right when I needed them the most, they were there for me. I can say that about every single one of them. and. I know a lot of people can't say that, so I'm hugely grateful to God that that's the position that I'm in. I've been blessed with a family that I have. Um, friends as well. I've got loads of friends who supported me, but of course it's it's very... If you're friends, of course you have friends who are cl more close than others and stuff like that, so there's some that, would, that are like family, and I put them in that same category, but with some other friends it's, it's different because there's not really a lot they can do for you. They can send you a message here and there and whatever, and you appreciate their support, but it's it's from a distance. And it's hard because you, especially in that mind frame, you know everyone means well, you want, you appreciate all of their, their support and their love, but because your mind is so fried at that time, you almost don't even, you're like, I just want to be alone. I don't want to, speak to anyone, I don't want to hear from anyone, I don't want to... So you're actually, under, you're being, you're almost ungrateful, despite me being hugely disappointed with what had happened. And obviously demoralized and you're, you're going through it. My mindset from, from even before the injury, so not before the injury, before the op, was I know what other people have done with this injury. I know how quick people, have, other people have got from, how quick other people have got back from it. But I'm going to do it the fastest anyone's ever done it. That was my mindset. Despite being sad, despite being in a situation, my mindset was still, I'm going to get back. And I had to almost say it to myself and force myself to believe it. And it took time for me to get there, but from the moment that it happened, 
after digesting and realizing the situation I was in, I said, okay, all I can do is put in as much work as I can in order to be the fastest that's ever been done. And not just to be back just for the sake of it, but to be stronger, um, performing better and in a better position than I was before. So yeah, it was, it was a tough journey. It took everything for me, every, every day was working towards getting my Achilles better and not just my Achilles, but my whole body. How can I improve myself? How can I use this time that I'm not playing football to maximize myself? And for, for all that, I, that I've been through and all that I've, I've seen on this journey, I can say for a fact that I know that I'm in a better place because of that experience that I went through, having to come in every single day, not taking days off, focusing solely on, is what I'm about to do going to help my Achilles? Every decision that I make when I go home, whether, it's, I'm at, whether I'm at football, whether I'm at home, whether I'm going out, whatever I'm doing, is this decision going to help my Achilles or help my rehab and help me improve? If it's not, I'm not on it. I remember we had, I think it was a run of three games. I think the first one was against Newcastle. And that was my aim. My mindset was, I want to be back for Newcastle. I don't have to play. I don't have to, I just need to be just involved. Um, but it was a 23s game that they wanted me to play in beforehand, which would give me more minutes and more exposure. So I said, okay, no problem, I'll play in that. Um, I think the next game after that was Burnley and I was on the bench and that was a, a huge moment because it was like, okay, cool. I'm back here and imagine I come on and score or whatever. Um, so you're obviously dreaming about this, about it being an amazing moment for yourself. Um, but I ended up not coming on that game. But then the next game against Aston Villa at home, um, I remember being on the bench, warming up, um, and then the manager telling me, yeah, cool, get ready, you're coming on. And that feeling was just, I can't explain to you the feeling because for you to understand, you'd have to have experienced everything that, I've, that I experienced throughout the whole journey, which was, as I said, every single day dedicated to being better and improving myself and putting myself in a better position than I was yesterday. And that was a focus. And to do that every single day for, I don't know, five months, five and a half months, and then to come on, it felt like, it felt like what, what you've done is actually a madness. And not just being there, but feeling like myself. At the time, I felt like myself. It's only now that I realise I wasn't myself. <laughs> but at the time, it was, I can't believe God has done this for me. For me to even be back on the pitch in the Premier League, being able to, to play, this is, this is a blessing from God. So that was a, an amazing, amazing moment and one that I won't, I won't forget. There's so much more to to me that, to me than I thought. So before, if you'd asked me before, I'd say no way I could be injured and go through that, I would think I'm done, like I'm finished. But going through it, it let me know that there's a resilience that's, that's in us. And if you're put in a situation, you can deal with it. It may be, look difficult, it may be tough, but whatever situation you're in, You've got the tools to, to overcome it. It's just about finding it. And sometimes, of course, other situations are more difficult than others and whatever. But the fact is that us as, as humans, we've got it in us. You just have to find it and you have to pull it out. And it may be difficult, it may be tough, but it's there. Um, another thing was, it let me know that there's more to life as well than football. So before it was, as much as I love football, I would come in from games and if we didn't win or I didn't play well, or whatever, that's my, not just my day done, that's my weekend done. I don't want to chat to anyone. I don't want to see anyone. Um, 
if I see you and you see me smiling, I'm just smiling for you inside. It's, it's dark in there. But it let me know that there's so much more to life than, than football. I love football. I love playing it. I love entertaining. I love the fact that there's, there's fans that come to watch you every single game and people have chants and there's a, it's, it's all amazing. I'm, I'm hugely blessed and grateful to be in this position. But it also let me know that there's there's so much, so many more important things. The fact that I'm healthy, the, the fact that my family are about, the fact that I'm breathing, the fact that I've got an opportunity to to impact the world away from football. For me, these are important things and it sort of shifted the focus a bit. As much as I want to be the best footballer that I can be, I want to perform every single week. I'm, of course, hugely dedicated because that's that's my field, that's where I work. Um, I'm also understanding that it doesn't have to, to take 100% of me, if you understand what I mean. It doesn't have to take 100% of my mental capacity. It doesn't have to take 100% of me emotionally. There's a point where I can disconnect and be like, I want to focus on my family. I want to focus on just chilling and not not worrying about what the score was or what this was, I can just be free. And I think that's helped me hugely now this season um, with just being a lot more level throughout all of it, through whether we win, whether we lose. Of course, the ambition is still the same, but you're just in more control, I guess, which is, uh, again, another another blessing. Out of applause. Hey, hey, hey. Nah, chill, man. Love, bro. Love. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. He said this is me, bro. Nah, big man thing. That's it. That was emotional. Nah, thank you, man. Whatever God wants to happen will happen. And that's the mentality that I had. And I think that's a, a huge, a huge blessing in a in a difficult situation like that. Holding that cough for time. <laughs> no, he's got to. <laughs> nah, that's blood and that's blood, sweat and tears. <laughs>